Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day. Day 55 of the 100 days of hell with Python Algo Trading. Normal distribution, one of the most easiest, but one of the most important topic in the quantitative field. Why? Because it is everywhere. You will see this in natural phenomena, you will see this in human made phenomena, and you will see it everywhere. And that's why a lot of research has been done on this topic. And because of that, we know everything about the normal distribution, all in and all outs. So if you are able to make any data into a normal distribution, then it will be much easier to calculate all the properties of that particular data, right? So that's why it's very important to understand this. And even in the financial field, it plays an important role. So let's first understand few examples of the natural and human made phenomena of the normal distribution. The natural phenomena are human heights, blood pressure, birth weights, lifespan of species, rainfall amount, weight of the fruits, these all are normal distribution. When we take a huge sample size, it becomes a normal distribution. Let's see some example of human made normal distribution, which includes the test score like the GRE, TOEFL, CAT, MAT, IQ scores, battery life, traffic flow rules, stock returns, energy consumption. So these all are the example of this. But to understand what exactly is this, we have to deep dive in this. And in order to understand, we will start with very basics. So first of all, we will understand mean and standard deviation and then gradually we'll proceed with advanced level, right? And one more thing that this normal distribution is also known as the bell curve or you can say Gaussian distribution, right? So if you can see on the screen, this bell curve shape is everywhere in the natural phenomena, right? This bell curve shape, this one, it is everywhere. So let's say you toss a coin. So there are only two possible outcomes. One is head and another is tail, right? And the probability is one by two of each outcome, correct? And also when we roll a dice, there are six possibilities, right? Of one, two, three, four, five, and six, and each one is one by six. These are the example of discrete data. And when you plot the graph for the coin, this one, it will be like this, the one by two, and it will be like this for head, and for tail also, it will be like this. And for the dice, it will be like for one, two, three, four, five, six. It will be exactly like this. This will be the example of uniform distribution, right? Because everything is equal here. But when we talk about normal distribution, we are talking about continuous data. And what is continuous data? Let's say you ask for the height of 10 people, right? If you go there and Let's say you ask for height of 10 people, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. If you make it very clear to all the 10 people that you have to give your height in only integers, right? So what it can be then? Let's say the first person say, my height is 6 feet. The second says, my height is 5. Third says, my height is 5. Again, the fourth one says, my height is 6. Fifth. Five, five, five. And let's say one can have seven and another can have four. But most of them have the height between five to six because you have made it very clear that if your height is 5.8, you will say six. If your height is 5.2, you will say five. So we can consider, for example, this is a discrete data, right? But in real life, what happens? The height is not discrete, it is continuous because if you ask them, it might be 6.2, right? This person's height might be 5.12. His height might be 5.235. He can say my height is 6.01. He can say my height is 5.2345. He can say it is 5.0.001, right? Means it is not possible to calculate the probability of any one outcome. It is not possible. Because when we try to draw a graph of this, let's say if we have only a uh, five values, right? Let's say his height is five, his height is six, so five and six. So we can easily calculate, right? But let's say we have a sample size of one million people. So in that case, we know that the height will be between five to six feet of more than 90% people for sure. Only few of them will be less than four feet and only few of them will be greater than six feet. So in that case, we can draw a graph like this, 
the graph will be something like this right and we can say the mean is let's say it is five feet here it is four and here it is six so we can say more than 90 percent height will be in this only so this is a bell shaped curve and it is also known as the normal distribution and also gaussian distribution so i can write it here normal distribution also gaussian distribution and this phenomena is everywhere even if you try to find let's say i'm flying from uh, singapore to jaipur and i know that the travel time between singapore and jaipur is six hours right so if i take a sample of one million people they all will say for some it took around 5.5 hours for few it is took like 5.6 5.7 but most of the data will be between 5 to 6 only few will say it took me let's say 4.5 and few will say it took me around 8.5 so you will observe this phenomena everywhere this normal distribution is very common and if you are able to transform your data into normal distribution then it will become very easy for you to analyze the data further right so let's say for example i ask 1 million people their salaries and i write a sample of 10 people here so let's say the first told me it is 5k second told me it's 5.5 uh, third told me it is 6 fourth told me it is 4 fifth say it is 4.5 sixth say it is again 5.5 seventh say it is 5 eighth 5.5 nine says it is 6 and 10 says it is again 5. So if I try to draw this, how can I do that? I know that the salary is ranging from 4 to 6, right? So I can write like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So I can draw like, I can draw like this, right? And let's say 5 is the mean here. Or let's try to calculate the mean with this data. So what it will be, so the sum of this data will be, let's do calculation. So sum is 52 divided by 10, which is 5.2. So we can say the mean is 5.2, right? So I can write it here that it is 5.2, the mean. And if you are able to understand, the mean represents the position on the X. So you can write like this, mean is the X axis position. Right. So let me show you that if you change the mean, let's say if you make the mean 6.2, then your graph will be like this. This will be the mean and you have to draw like this. It will be some somewhat like this, right? If you change the mean to, let's say 4.2, then what will happen? Your mean will be here. Then you have to draw like this, right? Means we can say the mean is shifting the position on the X axis. Now let's try to find the standard deviation. So how we can do that? We just have to subtract this mean from these values. So what it will be? It will be, uh, let's say it will be minus 0 0.2. Then it will be 0 0.3, 1. This is minus 1. This is minus 1.2. This is 0 0.3. This will be minus 0 0.2. This will be 0 0.3, 0 0.8. And this will be minus 0 0.2. And actually this will be also 0 0.8 okay now what we'll do let's quickly calculate the standard deviation of this so instead of calculating manually what i'll do i'll create a list quickly so okay let me quickly create a series and then i can find salary series dot mean so mean is 5.2 which we found out correct and then let's find the uh, standard deviation so cell dot series and std so it will be uh, 0 0.62 so Let's write it here. Okay, so the standard deviation will be 0 0.632, right? Now, we have seen that this mean shifts the X position, but what is the utility of the standard deviation? Let me show you. So here, this is 0 0.632. So how I can write this? Let's say this are bell curve, normal distribution. Our mean is 5.2, right? And 0 0.632 means our first standard deviation is this means we can add and subtract this so when i add 5.2 to uh, 0 0.6 it will become 5.8 around approximate not exact it will become around 5.8 and when i subtract this it will become around 
4.6 right this is the first standard deviation i can write like this this is the first standard deviation right this one now when i add and subtract again what happen it will become the second standard deviation this right so i can write like this and what will be the value of this second standard deviation uh, 5.8 plus uh, 0.6 will be 6.4 and it will be 4.0 right then the third will be here somewhere it is not like exact but you get the idea right so it will become uh, it will become 7 and it will become 3.4 now what is the meaning of this the meaning of this that the standard deviation decides the shape of the curve right it tells us that how the data in the distribution is spreaded if you increase or decrease the standard deviation the shape of the curve will be changed so we can say if the sigma the standard deviation is smaller the curve will be narrower and taller right if you increase this if it is larger then the curve will be fatter and wider right hopefully it is clear and let me write the properties of that also the mu also mu is the mean and it changes the changes the x axis position if you increase the x value your curve will be shifted to right if you decrease the x value your curve will be shifted to left means you can say these are the two parameters if you tweak the parameters your distribution will be tweaked Okay, now let's understand few characteristics of the normal distribution. So I'll just draw quickly the normal distribution. So we can say this is the mean, right? Mu. Actually, uh, it is not symmetric, but you get the idea. So we can say symmetric around the mean. And you can say the data near the mean, data near the mean are more frequent. Right? And what are the key characteristics? key characteristics you can say symmetry the data is symmetric around the mean which we have seen already second and the most important is mean median and mode all are same all are same means whatever the value which is mean that is most frequent in the data right and third it is bell shape so which means whenever you see any data please first try to understand this graphically and if you find that this is somewhat like normal distribution, then you already know everything about the normal distribution and you can quickly find out so many powerful characteristics of that particular data, right? Or this is also known as the quotient distribution. And the fourth one is empirical value. Empirical value. What is the empirical value? If you can see on the screen, this is the mean and this is the first standard deviation. This is the second standard deviation. And this is the third standard deviation means we can say in any normal distribution if you can find out that this data is somewhat looking like the normal distribution but then what you can figure out quickly that when we combine this we have around 68 percent data in the first standard deviation right then we have 13.6 and 13.6 which is close to 27 in second and third is 2.1 and 2.1 which is close to four percent in it is second it is in third standard deviation means we can say when we calculate this it becomes uh, around 7 4, 11 9 9 around 90 percent and this is really huge which means of any normal distribution we have 99 percent of data within the third standard deviation within this right and these all are unknowns right we cannot assume that we know the value of these and we don't care for now means we can say of any normal distribution we have the 99% data within the third standard deviation. And that is really very, very important property. And we'll use this a lot in upcoming uh, sessions, right? So please keep in mind this property. Hopefully you are able to understand the characteristics of normal distribution. And for now, we are not going to see the formula because that is not much required uh, in our case. But if you want, I can show you, but that is really not required right for now. When we require this, I'll show you. Don't worry about that. Right? The main thing is you should be having a conceptual clarity. That's what I focus always, right? Now, now let's understand few more things about the normal distribution. And one of them is standard normal curve. So let me draw it. Standard normal curve. And what is that? Okay, let me first tell you few properties that are Z distribution in which mu, 
means mean equals to zero and sigma means standard deviation is equals to one always and also area under the curve under the curve is equals to one and how does it looks like it is also a type of novel distribution in which and let me make it blue so here we have seen that mu is equals to zero right zero then standard deviation is one means one in left and one in right one means we'll subtract and we'll add plus one this is the first and the second will be minus two and here plus two and third will be minus three and here it will be plus three so these are the basic properties of standard normal curve in which mean is always zero and standard deviation is always one and area under the curve is also one and with the help of these properties we can perform so many powerful things in this let me show you how so if you can see here if the area under the curve the whole area is one then i can say that this area this one this one this area means this will be 50 percent or i can say the probability is 0 0.5 and similarly i can say this half the right half is also 50 percent and cumulative probability is also 0 0.5 Okay, now with the help of Python, what we can do, we can convert any normal distribution to a standard normal distribution and we can calculate these properties easily. So if this is 0 0.5, then let me show you on the screen that how we can utilize this. So to use this, what you need to do, you need to import the library SkyPy. So to import the SkyPy library, I have to write from skypy.stats as norm and then here, you can use the and let run this cell uh, import sorry import and run this cell and here you can write norm dot cdf and here you have to provide uh, three values the first is the x value let's say if you want to find out the cumulative probability up to this zero point right this green area you want to find out here we are able to guess uh, visually because we know that if the whole area is one then the half will be 0 0.5 right but with the help of python what you can do you can simply plug in the values so the value of x is zero then we have to plug in the value of mean which is also zero and then the value of standard deviation which is one and when you run this you will see that we have the value 0 0.5 okay now let's say if you find out the cumulative probability when x is equals to one means if you can see on the screen we want to find out this this area right means x equals to minus one so simply you go to the python so simply you plug in the values so what you will do uh, here you will write norm dot cdf and here x is equals to minus one mean is zero and then standard deviation is one and when you run this you will see that we have 0 0.158 means this probability when x is equals to minus one will be 0 0.158 which means 15.8 percent and with this you can imagine that what you can achieve with this. It is really very helpful and you will be using this a lot in the upcoming videos when you perform some real life examples, right? And one more thing that here you assume that this is coming from infinity. This curve never touches the x axis, right? So it is coming from infinity to infinity, right? And you can write this equation as minus infinity to z to let's say for this it will be minus one is equals to 0 0.158 and these are all known as the z distribution and generally you can calculate without python also you have a z table and you can find all the values there but in python we will be using python and it becomes very easy for us so this was it for this video we have understood the random walk in the previous session in this session we have understood the normal distribution and then we understood the standard normal distribution and if you are able to understand this then in next session we will apply these concepts in the real life that how we can use random walk the normal distribution in the real time stock market prices so with that being said i'll end this video here and if you have any doubt please let me know in the comments we can discuss it on telegram and instagram also and i'll see you in the next video until then bye bye take care have a nice day